Hey guys, welcome to section 7 of this course, which is called Shipping to Production. We're getting quite close to the end of our series now, but we've still got a few sections left. So far, we've managed to build a small application, write a few tests for it, and write some real time functionality. This time around, we're going to be taking a look at improving our application's performance with Node.js cluster. We're going to take a look at how to ship our application to production. More specifically, we'll be using Cluster, a core Node.js module. We'll integrate it with our app before considering if Cluster is the correct tool to achieve what we need. Cluster is a core module that spawns multiple child processes using childprocess.fork. That communicates with a master process via IPC. This is an experimental feature of Node.js. Usually, a Node.js process will only use one core, meaning that we're not using all of our available CPU power. Cluster allows us to spin up multiple processes to take advantage of all the cores, whilst still sharing the same server ports. We don't need to npm install Cluster, as it's a core module. So let's just require it in our application's bootstrap. So let's edit bin www. Under the top, we'll just do var cluster equals require cluster. When using cluster, the script knows if it's the master process or the child process. We can use this to only execute our application in the child processes. In the master process, we have to tell cluster to span child processes. Typically, you want to spawn one child process per core available. To do this, we use the core module to detect how much capacity we have available instead of having to hard code a value. We don't need to require our application and all our models each time we load the cluster master process. So instead, we move these require statements to after cluster.isMaster. We say, if the cluster is the master process, count the number of CPUs available and fork child workers. Otherwise, do everything else. If we start our application now, we can see each log message multiple times. This is because it shows once per child worker. The final part of the code that we need to add is a listener for any child process exiting. If this happens, we just want to log it and spawn a new worker. Let's start our application and take a look at running Node.js processes. I'm going to kill process 80904. I'm expecting it to show up in my logs, saying that the worker died and was restarted. As we can see, worker number six died, and we spawned a new worker, and the new worker executed everything that a normal worker would when it was starting up. You might be wondering why we're using the cluster module rather than just spawning multiple instances of our application ourselves. We use the cluster module as it allows all of our sub-processes to listen on the same port. Our master process receives requests and passes it off to one of the child processes to handle. Unfortunately, cluster is considered an unstable part of Node.js. Because of this, we're going to remove it from our application by undoing all the changes that we made this time. Don't worry though, we'll do something similar in the next video, using more stable technologies. Whilst we design our application to run as asynchronously as possible, sometimes we need to perform some synchronous operations. When this happens, having multiple event loops available is a big boost to our application's response time. Cluster allows multiple processes all to listen on the same master port, which gives us a way to add more capacity to our application with minimal effort. Next time, we'll take a look at how we can do something similar using multiple instances of our application, but we'll use Nginx to load balance across them rather than using the cluster module.